Despite the fact that most vehicles available in War Thunder are production vehicles, you will still run into unique experimental machines here and there. Those prototypes and pre-production models were used as testing grounds for many unorthodox design choices and interesting technologies, often years or decades ahead of their time. Today, we're going to speak about the most striking and curious experimental designs that you can find in the game. Let's start with heavy tanks. There were a lot of truly revolutionary designs in this class of vehicles, after all. For instance, the French AMX-50 was equipped with a drum autoloader, which was a very rare feature in the 1950s. Or take a look at the Tiger prototype produced by Porsche. Thanks to its bleeding-edge hybrid gasoline-electric transmission, it could go as fast in reverse as it could in forward gear. Then we have the IS-7, a rare Soviet event vehicle developed in the late 1940s, a true culmination of years of heavy tank development by the USSR. It got a 130mm gun fitted with an autoloader, a 1,000 horsepower engine making this huge vehicle weighing almost 70 tons reach 60 kph and an armor arrangement making it almost invincible in battle. The design of the IS-7 was so advanced for its time that it can actually fight proper MBTs. The Object 279 is another curious high-tech oddity, a Soviet gift tank built to withstand the shockwave of a nuclear explosion. It can easily be recognized by its unique four-pack propulsion system and its unorthodox armor design, allowing it to shrug off heat and APF-SDS rounds, uh, sometimes. We simply cannot move on without mentioning the American T-32, a highly versatile and well-armored heavy tank using a lot of parts of the M-26 Pershing and capable of taking out early MBTs as well. Okay, now let's talk about medium tanks, starting with models that got their autoloaders way earlier than most other vehicles. That's the French Lorraine 40T, the T-54E1, which is an American premium tank, and the Japanese Chiri 2. Compared to other armored vehicles of their time, all three had a lot of firepower at their disposal. For example, the 100mm cannon of the French vehicle took only four seconds to reload. That's two or even three times faster than most of its enemies. A few other interesting designs were created when the military tried to upgun older production models. For instance, the premium T-34-100 is armed with the largest caliber cannon among all members of the Soviet T-34 family. Another example is what Italians tried to do with American M-47 Patton II. They were going to outfit it with a massive 105mm gun. Obviously, there were also quite a few unusual light tanks designed throughout the years. Take a gander at the HSTV-L and the Char 25T. The former design incorporates a lot of innovative engineering, like a very advanced auto-loading system capable of reloading its gun in just one and a half seconds. Or like its extremely angled armor that can sometimes bounce even APF-SDS rounds. The French Char 25T has similar strengths, but there's a small detail to consider. The team at Batignol Chantillon worked on their design two decades earlier than their American counterparts. On one hand, that's impressive by itself. On the other hand, the American tank obviously makes use of more advanced weaponry and technologies. If you're interested in pre-war vehicles, take a note of the Soviet T-126, 
an initial prototype of the T-50 light tank, coming with unexpectedly thick armor. If you're more into wheeled vehicles, then there is the American T-18 Boarhound, a unique 20-ton armored car coming with really sturdy armor, at least by its class standards, and quite a lot of firepower. Next up are the most unusual MBTs. The MBT-70 was a tank designed as a part of an American-West German joint project, and it's one of the most forward-looking vehicles of its class. With its fancy 152mm gun launcher, equipped with an autoloader and a remote-control 20mm autocannon, it looks pretty modern even by contemporary standards. And that's without even mentioning the fact that it featured hydropneumatic suspension and housed all crew members, including the driver, in a well-protected armored capsule. The Japanese STB-1 is also a prototype worth mentioning. It's one of the very few tanks equipped with an advanced hydropneumatic suspension system, allowing it to be effective on any kind of terrain. SPGs can't forget about SPGs. They were all about getting even more powerful guns and thicker armor. Take the British FV4005, for instance. You know it for sure. Thanks to its crazy 183mm gun, and therefore its superior firepower, it made it into at least a couple of our books of records. When it comes to destroying things, the American T-95 is no slouch either. Hell, <laughs> not every heat round can pierce 300 millimeters of steel. If you like something more unorthodox, look no further than the Sav 201248, a Swedish premium SPG. It's armed with one-of-a-kind 120 millimeter cannon fitted with an auto-loading system. When it comes to SPAA vehicles, we have to mention the German Kugelblitz, the French AMX-13 DCA-40, and the Zoot-37, a Soviet premium self-propelled anti-aircraft gun. All three of these are pretty well armed and capable of engaging both air and ground targets. Unfortunately, a lot of designs that potentially could be game-changing never made it into production, even though some of them were thoroughly tested. The amazing MBT-70 turned out to be too damned expensive to make, and the T-34, armed with a 100mm gun, was immediately rendered obsolete by the arrival of a much more advanced T-54. In War Thunder, though, all these prototypes get a chance to fight against their production brethren. So all that hard work was not in vain. Is there an experimental design that you particularly like? Please tell us in the comments below.